Hey guys, I'm so excited to be doing another creepy video here on my channel. My last one was the Oakland County Child Killer case, which honestly, originally, I didn't even really want to do because I was like, this is so dark, like all these kids are being abducted and killed and it's brutal. But then I was like, no, I do want to talk about it because it took place really close to where I live and then I uploaded it and you guys just loved it and wanted more. And one of the requests was to cover the Zodiac Killer. I've heard of the Zodiac Killer on Criminal Minds. Now I just need to stop myself for one second if you are a regular watcher of my channel or maybe just like my creepy videos and you have never seen criminal minds what genuinely like my brother and I used to just like fucking constantly watch Criminal Minds and like when I say I would pop my pussy for some Criminal Minds, not even exaggerating and I hate using the word pussy, but I would pop my pussy for some Criminal Minds. My parents are like gonna see this and be like, Alina, what? Like, you're gonna pop your pussy? Like, yes. Okay, but enough about that. I'm so sorry for being annoying. If you've never seen my channel before and this is the first video you've seen of mine, I'm sorry for being annoying. But like I gotta kind of promo my merch. So if you like fucking want this, the link is down below and I'm coming out with more soon and it's... I'm so excited. Anyways, let's get into the... As I almost just make everything fall. Let's get into the Zodiac Killer. So the Zodiac Killer, just like the Oakland County Child Killer that I already covered, was never solved. We do not know who the Zodiac Killer was. I just think that's like the creepiest part of these mysteries or these investigations is that they never figured out who it was. And ugh, that creeps me out because like when I'm watching like a Criminal Minds episode, like you know they're gonna get caught by the end of the episode. But like in these real life intense cases, sometimes they just do not get caught and that's so gravy. So there are five confirmed victims of the Zodiac Killer, but there may be as many as 37 victims and I'll get onto that in just a minute. So the Zodiac Killer was killing in California back in like the era of the 1960s and 1970s. A lot of these killings had to do with like the Bay Area of California and if you're not familiar with what that means, like the San Francisco area and this killer actually sent taunting letters to the Bay Area police and press and referred to himself as the Zodiac and he even used a specific symbol in all of his like correspondence with the public so I'm going to show you the little symbol that he used and it's just like a weak like it creeps me out especially when they are like literally writing letters to like the press or to the police because usually when they're doing that they're so fucking smart and they know how to not get caught and like Shit, like that's scary to think that you could just get murdered by someone and they'll never get caught. So like I said, he used that symbol to kind of like sign his letters and he also had a lot of very cryptic shit sent to the press and they were only able to decipher one of the cryptic one of the cryptic messages that they received from the Zodiac. So who fucking knows what's in those other ones? As I already mentioned, 37 murders were claimed by the Zodiac. The Zodiac was like, basically, in one of his letters, yo, I've killed 37 people. So who knows if he was just trying to like fuck with them? Who knows if he's really killed more along the lines of like 10 or 20? Or really if he has almost killed 40 fucking people. So five, like I said, victims were killed by the Zodiac, but two people have been confirmed to have survived attacks by the Zodiac. I'm just so excited to get into all of this victimology and share them with you guys. Okay, so if I'm looking down, it's to read these names off of my phone. David, David, wow. David Arthur Faraday was 17 and Betty Lou Jensen was 16. And they were shot and killed December 20th, 1968 on Lake Herman Road. The next victim's name is Michael Renault Majo. He was 19 and he was with Darlene Elizabeth Faraday who was 22 and they were shot and killed on July 4th, 1969. They were in just like a park parking lot in Vallejo, California and actually Michael Majo survived the attack. So keep that in mind, Michael Majo survived. More confirmed victims are Brian Calvin Hartnell, he was 20, with Cecilia Ann Shepard who was 22. They were killed on September 27th, 1969 and if you can't tell there's quite a bit of time between these killings so that either means he was just inactive or he was killing other people and they didn't link it and something else to 
think about is this is the third couple or just like group of two that was killed by the Zodiac. So it seems like he was at least at first going after young couples in their teens or early 20s and killing them. They were actually stabbed to death, which not to get super dark again, but I feel like stabbing would be the worst way to go. Like if you just get shot, you're dead very quick. Well, usually. Um, especially if you get shot in the head, you're just like you're usually just like dead. But if you are like just stabbed and like left to die in Napa County, California, Brian Hartnell survived with eight stab wounds in his back, like but unfortunately, Cecilia Shepard died two days later as a result of her injuries. So she did not die initially. That's crazy to me. I feel like if you're like this accomplished killer, you're the Zodiac, like wouldn't you like make sure that people are dead? Like, I mean, it's obviously good that a few people survive these attacks, but like wouldn't you want to make sure that the people you're trying to kill are like, but wouldn't you want to make sure that these people are like actually dead before you walk away from the scene? Maybe you want them to suffer because you're a sick son of a bitch, but like, oh, it's... And the last confirmed victim is Paul Lee Stein, who was 29, and he was killed on October 11th, 1969. He was killed in San Francisco. He was just shot and killed. So this whole method of killing from the Zodiac has been so inconsistent. Let's go back through my notes. He shot people, shot people again, stabbed them, and then shot a person. Then there are a bunch of suspected victims, so I'm just going to go over them really quick because I think it's interesting to look at them too, so sorry if I'm just reading straight from my phone. I don't want this to be like an impossibly long video. There was Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards. They were 18 and 17 years old. They were shot and killed on June 4th, 1963, so that was a while before. They were identified as possible Zodiac victims because of specific similarities between their attack and some Zodiac attacks that happened six years later. So then there's Sherry Jo Bates who was 18. She was stabbed to death and nearly decapitated. Okay, do you like there was Donna Lass who was 25 and this is very like complicated so let me just read this directly from the source. I'm not trying to like plagiarize, I promise. She was last seen six she was last seen September 6, 1970 in Nevada, which if you don't know that much about US geography, there's California and then Nevada is one of the bordering states of California. I know this because I used to live in California. Uh which was a San Francisco press operation on March 22nd, 1971, so about six months later. And this has been interpreted as the Zodiac No one has been able to confirm that this was actually him. Who knows if it was just a copycat, like trying to look like the Zodiac, because that is very, very common. And then there is Kathleen Johns, who was only 22. According to her, she was actually abducted by a man who could have been the Zodiac, but she was able to escape. So on March 22nd, 1970, and she was near Modesto, California, Johns escaped from the car of a man who drove her and her infant daughter around the area between Stockton and Patterson for approximately one and a half hours. So now now, I told you a little bit about the victims. We are gonna get really in depth into their specific cases. The first two victims, Betty Lou Jensen and David Faraday, were on their first date, which is ugh. they visited a friend before stopping at a local restaurant and then driving out on Lake Herman Road, which was where they were shot and killed. Now, the interesting part of this is where their car was parked at the time they were shot and killed was near a area that was known to be like a place where like lovers would go and park their car to like do things. So I don't know if the Zodiac hunted that, well, he must have, he must have hunted that place out because he knew there would be couples there, like that's sick and twisted, but okay. With forensic data, they actually were able to figure out that another car actually pulled up next to the car that those two kids were in, walked towards their car and possibly told them to get out of the car. Betty Lou Jensen appeared from the data to exit the car first and then David Faraday was shot in the head as he was leaving his car. Betty Lou Jensen was fleeing the killer. She was running away from the scene of the crime. Since Faraday had been shot in the head, she was like, fuck this shit, I'm out. Almost 30 feet away from the car, she was gunned down by the Zodiac. She had five shots in her back, and then the killer just drove off. 
went about his day, went about his life, like nothing happened. Like, so when Darlene Farron and Michael Maju, Majo, fuck, I don't know, were in a park parking lot in Vallejo, California, they were actually just a few miles away from that last attack I just told you about. According to my source, they sat in their parked car. So like, basically for the rest of my life, I'm not gonna sit in a parked car because like a murderer is gonna come kill me. They were sitting in their parked car and apparently a second car drove into the lot and parked alongside them, but almost immediately drove away. About 10 minutes later, this second car returned, but this time parked behind them and he he exited the vehicle, approached these passengers side carrying a flashlight and a 9mm Luger, which is a handgun. Apparently the killer put the flashlight in their faces, blinding them with the light and started shooting. Both victims were hit and since Maju was closer to the shooter, bullets actually went through him and went into Darlene Farron. But apparently the killer just walked away and was like going about his life, but then he could hear Michael Maju like still moaning from the intense, unbearable, unbelievable I can't even fathom the pain he was in. The killer walked back and shot them both again. So that was July 4th. So the next day, July 5th at about 12.40 a.m., so this was like probably not that long after the attack, a man phoned the Vallejo Police Department to report and claim responsibility for the attack. So this man called the Vallejo Police Department. He wasn't calling like the big San Francisco Police Department. He knew exactly where this attack happened. So obviously, I mean, we have to assume that this was the Zodiac making that call and the caller also took credit for the murders of Jensen and Faraday six and a half months earlier. Obviously the police are gonna try to, um, you know, track this call and it was just a phone booth near a gas station. And the weirdest, creepiest part of this, so I told you in the Oakland County Child Killer video that there was actually a body found off of a freeway within sight of a police department. This Zodiac Killer phoned the police department, the Vallejo Police Department, and made that call and was like, yo, I've killed four people in the last, you know, year. He was only a few blocks from the Vallejo Police Department when he made that call. So like, obviously he gives no fucks. And like I already said, Maju survived the attack even though he had bullets in his like face, neck, and chest. So after both of those murders, the letters from the Zodiac started to occur. On August 1st, so less than a month from um, the attack I just told you about, three letters prepared by the killer were received at the Vallejo Times Herald, the San Francisco Chronicle, and the San Francisco Examiner. So he was sending this to multiple different news outlets because he really fucking wanted them to talk about him apparently and that's a huge thing with serial killers They like want news to be like obsessed with them The nearly identical letters took credit for both of the attacks I've already mentioned and each letter also included one third of a cryptogram. The killer claimed that this cryptogram contained his identity. So obviously each letter had one third. The killer demanded that these letters be printed on each paper's front page or he would cruise around all weekend killing lone people in the night and then move on to kill again until I end up with a dozen people over the weekend. So he was not fucking around like at all. The San Francisco Chronicle published the letter it got and alongside it the Vallejo police chief said we're not satisfied that the letter was written by the murderer and he even said like yo murderer if you're out there uh, give us more proof of your identity and the threatened murders um, that he said he was gonna have like a dozen people over the weekend that never happened and so on August 7th so not even a week after those first letters were received the San Francisco examiner received another letter and the Zodiac actually for the very first time referred to himself as the Zodiac he was trying to give that Vallejo police chief more proof that he was indeed who he claimed to be. In that letter, the Zodiac included details about the murders which had not yet been released to the public, as well as a message to the police that when they cracked his code, they will have me. Some people were able to crack that 408 symbol cryptogram and it contained a very misspelled message. Basically, the killer was going to collect slaves for the afterlife. So yeah, let me read that to you now. Are you ready for this? I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all to kill something. Gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part is that when I die I will be reborn in paradise and the I have killed I guess he means the people I have killed will become my slaves I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife 
so this man was crazy. The next killing that went down was in September, near the end of September, as I've already talked about, and those victims were Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard. They were having a picnic. They weren't just sitting in their car, like, doing things. Like, they were having a picnic. They were trying to, like, make the most out of the day. Like, they were really trying to just, like, chill. And then, um, they were approached by a man wearing a black executioner's type hood with clip-on sunglasses over the eye holes and a bib-like device on his chest that had a white three inch by three inch cross circle symbol on it which is probably um his very very distinctive zodiac sign that i've already showed you here it is again like in case you really wanted to see it again like it's right here like so this man approached them with a gun and he claimed that he was from Montana, had killed some people in Montana and like needed their car and needed their money so that he could escape to Mexico. He had brought pre-cut lengths of plastic clothesline and told Shepard to tie up Hartnell before he tied her up. The killer realized that they were trying to like cheap him out and not bind their hands hands as you know hard as he wanted them but the real question is if you're like a killer and you're gonna try to like hold people in one place like maybe you should do the hand binding to like make sure that it works out in your favor i don't know Hartnell claimed that he thought it was just a very strange robbery. He said he needed their car and their money, and maybe he was just tying them up so that he could rob them. But then the Zodiac pulled out a knife and just stabbed them both. The killer then hiked 500 yards back up to the main road, drew his little Zodiac symbol on Hartnell's car door with a black pen, and wrote beneath it, Vallejo 12 20 68 7 4 69 and September 27th, 69, 6.30 by knife. So he's basically saying like, yes, this is me and I've killed all these people. Then he called the Napa County Sheriff's Office to once again confess to what he had done. So creepy. He used a pay phone that was once again only a few blocks from the Sheriff's Office, but it was over 25 miles from the crime scene. So that's weird to me. I feel like if you kill people and then you like really feel the need to tell the cops that you killed these people, wouldn't you want to like do that right away? But no, he was like patient and drove over 25 miles to very close to the sheriff's office and then made that phone call then. He was obviously trying to taunt and fuck with the police and he was obviously very or is, I don't know if he's still alive because we don't know who he is, but he obviously has a lot of intelligence if he's able to pull off this off. So once again, the Zodiac did not make sure that both victims were fucking dead before he left the scene so there were people like fishing nearby and heard the screams and went to help so then some park rangers came to the scene and then shepherd the woman was actually able to give the park rangers a very detailed description of the killer she was still conscious and had not bled out but unfortunately she entered a coma in the ambulance on the way to the hospital and never regained consciousness so unfortunately she did die two days later but hartnell actually survived the attack. Two weeks later, on October 11th, 1969, there was an attack, but this was just the one victim with the name of Paul Stein, and he was pretty close to Union Square in San Francisco. If any of you are familiar with San Francisco, you probably know what the hell that means. Uh, I haven't been there since I was like two, so I don't know where that is. Paul Stein was a cab driver, and at the intersection of Mason and Jury Streets, which is one block west from Union Square, he requested to be taken to Presidio Heights. So Stein, the cab driver, drove one block and then the passenger, who was the Zodiac killer, shot Stein with a 9mm. Took Stein's wallet and Stein's car keys and actually three people witnessed this crime and called the police while this was going down. They were across the street and they were like, what the fuck so they called the police and they also observed that man wiping the cab down before walking away now this is where things get very interesting i'm just gonna read this directly from my source because if i try to like reword it any better it's it's just not gonna be as precise two blocks from the crime scene officer don folk responding to the call observed a white man walking along the sidewalk and stepping onto a stairway leading up to the front yard of one of the homes on the north side of the street the radio dispatcher had alerted to be on the lookout for a black suspect, so they drove past him without stopping. The mix-up in descriptions remains unexplained to this day. So if you know anything about the Zodiac Killer, he is supposed to be white. So this cop drove 
right past who maybe fucking was the Zodiac Killer. Drove right past him because he was told to look for a black man. But if he would have just been told to look for a white man, maybe they would have caught him. The three witnesses were able to come up with a composite sketch of the killer. And what is absolutely fucking insane is with this specific crime, the San Francisco Police Department investigated an estimated 2,500 suspects. 2,500 suspects. Like, let me just, like, just, just take a moment, okay? My high school had 2,000 people in it. That's a lot of fucking people. 2,500 suspects were questioned. Who the fuck is this guy? Between that killing and his next killing, he sent some more correspondence to the press because for some reason that is why this is such an interesting case. He wanted to keep in contact with the police and the press. They received another letter on October 14th, which was just three days after Paul Stein was killed in his cab. It also contained a piece of Paul Stein's shirt tail as proof he was the killer. So somehow, some way throughout the altercation where he killed Stein, and he wiped down the car and everything, he must have snagged a piece of Stein's bloody shirt tail because he mailed that in to the San Francisco Chronicle because that's just like what you do with your life, you know? And that letter also included a threat about killing school children on a bus, which would have obviously been horrific. He even like gave them a descriptive step-by-step -step of how he would kill a bunch of kids on a school bus. I would just shoot out the front tire and pick off the kitties as they come bouncing out. What? How fucked up do you have to be? Like, what screws have to be so fucking loose in your head? On October 20th, someone actually called the Oakland, California Police Department and claimed to be the Zodiac. He demanded that one of two prominent lawyers, Ethley Bailey or Melvin Belly, appear on the local show AM San Francisco. Bailey was not available, but Belly did appear on the show. Jim Dunbar, the host of AM San Francisco, appealed to the viewers to keep the lines open and a Eventually, someone who claimed to be the Zodiac called several times and said his name was Sam. So once again, um, we never know if this is just some kook who's calling in like, yeah, I'm the Zodiac Killer and like, my name's Sam. Or if this really was the Zodiac Killer, I doubt Sam was his real name because like, why would he just like give them his name? Belly actually agreed to meet up with Sam, but he never showed up which is actually very similar to the Oakland County child killer. There was a weird situation where apparently the suspect was going to meet with a guy and he never did. So then on November 8th, the Zodiac mailed a card with another cryptogram consisting of 340 characters and that has never been decoded. Okay, I want you to take a moment to really let it sink into your brain how smart or like determined really you have to be to come up with cryptograms that have different codes each time. Like you have to have a lot of time on your hands. The next day on November 9th, the Zodiac mailed a seven page letter to the Chronicle. I feel like the Chronicle is like his newspaper of choice for some reason. The other two he doesn't really care about anymore. In this letter, he stated that two policemen stopped and actually spoke with him three minutes after he had shot Stein. Excerpts from the letter were published in the Chronicle on November 12th, three days later, including that Zodiac's claim that I just told you. And on that same fucking day, Officer Don Fook, who had just folk, I don't know, but I just mentioned him a minute ago to you guys, wrote a memo explaining what had happened the night of Stein's murder. On December 20th, 1969, exactly one year after that first murder of David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen, who were on their first date, the Zodiac mailed a letter to Belly, that one lawyer, that included another swatch of Stein's shirt, and the Zodiac said he wanted Belly to help him. These keep annoying me in the viewfinder, um, my fucking swatches, so sorry if they're annoying you. On March 22nd, 1970, quite a while later, Kathleen Johns was driving to visit her mother. She was seven months pregnant and had her 10-month-old daughter near her. My brother has some friends over and they are being so loud. So if you hear any just like yelling in the background, I'm sorry, they're animals. They're so loud. Anyways, let's just like continue. So while she was on a highway, there was a car behind her flashing its headlights and honking. So she pulled over and stopped on the side of the road. Could they physically be more loud? Like, I'm not sure. So the man in the car parked behind her approached her car and said he had observed one of her wheels was wobbling and he offered to help fix it. So after this man finished working on the car, he drove off, but as she started to drive again, she realized 
she realized that one of the wheels was starting to become wobbly and actually fell off of her car. So obviously he was not, you know, trying to I'm gonna kill you. Holy shit, were they being loud? Sorry. But now we can continue on. So basically, it was very obvious that the Zodiac was not trying to help her, but she fell for it. He said he was going to like help fix her car, but he actually made it so that her wheel would fall off of her car and she wouldn't be able to drive her car and so that her and her daughter could get into his car while they try to go get help. So apparently during this car ride, they passed several service stations to fix cars and the man never stopped. He drove them around basically in circles back and forth in no real direction for about 90 minutes so that is a long time and every time that she asked him like hey like why aren't you stopping or you know let's stop here he would just change the subject the reason that Johns was actually able to escape with her daughter from his car is while they were stopped at a red light she was like fuck this shit I'm out <laughs> and got right out of there it's not funny I shouldn't laugh but you know what I mean she was like I'm out this bitch and her and her daughter escaped they actually ended up hiding in like a nearby field and they could see him looking for them with a flashlight luckily he did not find them she obviously called the police and went to the station and was able to give a report on what had just happened she actually saw the police sketch of the zodiac that they had come up with after paul stein's murder and she was like oh my god that's the man that just had my daughter and i in his car like that is him she was afraid that the zodiac was going to come back and hurt or kill her and her daughter because now she realized this is a serial killer and when they found her car it was not only gutted but it was also set on fire in April 1970 he wrote a letter that says my name is blank and that was a 13 character cipher that they were unable to figure out apparently they had been like a recent bombing at the san francisco police station and he made sure in his letters to say like hey that was not me but i did do the other murders but like that bombing that wasn't me and the letter had a diagram of a bomb that he could use to blow up a school bus so as he already mentioned in another letter he for some reason has this fixation with killing kids on a school bus then he also wrote letters to the newspaper basically saying if you don't publish a bunch of stuff that i want you to publish about me i'm gonna blow up an entire school bus so they did as he said throughout the whole year of 1970 the police and different newspaper places got a lot of very cryptic ciphered weird letters from the zodiac and there is so much more that i could have covered but i already feel like this is going to be very very long but you can look into all of that it is very interesting there were also very random, um, not random, but like different attacks that went down that were not confirmed or like different disappearances. There was like a cop that was killed, like so many different murders or deaths that are not solved but also have not been like confirmed to be the Zodiac. But on November 13th, 1972, the final letter that was sent by the Zodiac that they're pretty sure actually was the Zodiac because a lot of letters that were suspicious, they were like, eh, is this a copycat, were received after this letter but like I already said this is the final letter that they believe to be from the Zodiac himself that they can confirm he actually had remained silent for a long time and this letter was not received until January 1974 okay so it had been a few years he praised the movie The Exorcist as the best satirical comedy that I have ever seen then you know he said some other weird shit at the end of some of his previous letters he put me and then a number and then SFPD and then zero by me he meant hi this is how many people i've killed and then san francisco police department zero because they have not caught me in this final letter said me 37 sfpd zero that's why people believe that the zodiac killer maybe killed 37 people so that is all of the fucking insane well not all but a lot of really insane information out there about the zodiac killer and about this crazy case that is still fucking unsolved and there really isn't that much out there about suspects i know in my oakland county child killer video i really went into all of the suspects but there's no like concrete um really anything to point people 
to being the Zodiac. As much as I hate to say it, this man was extremely intelligent, very smart, able to make these cryptogram things, send these letters, and make these telephone calls super close to police stations without getting caught. That's basically it for me. If you guys would like to hear about any other creepy unsolved cases or even solved cases, let me know. I would love to do that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!